Hello, to finish lesson four, dedicated to the study of the electric potential, we are going to perform several practical exercises of application of the concepts seen in the case of continuous charge distributions. This is what we had already given me in the corresponding lesson. Now what we are going to do is to perform several practical applications of the tools already known. Reviewing first, in that lesson what we saw was how to calculate the potential created by linear distributions, surface or volumetric distributions, in which the expressions were absolutely analogous, except that the integrals are of length, surface or volume, and that the charge differential is linear density per small length, surface density per small surface area, volumetric density per small volume. The first practical exercise that we are going to perform is to calculate the electric potential created by a rectilinear. Wire charged with a small charged with a constant charge density, lambda, at a point P on its axis. It may seem a very concrete case, but I warn that for any other point in space that is not on the alignment itself is much more complicated the calculation. Well, what we have to do is this integral, which is the one that corresponds to the case of linear distributions. And for that, the first thing we have to do is to define the geometry. Let's say that what we have here is a coordinate system that we have chosen to put for simplicity, the x-axis, according to the bar, the y-axis perpendicular. The specific point where I have put it is one that you can see that is a little to the left of the center, actually, as we will see at the end, is not relevant the specific location. But for the moment, we will put it here, so that with these dimensions a, b, and c, we have the following. The bar starts at the point of coordinates minus a, zero. Ends at coordinate point b, zero. And what I want to do is to calculate the potential at an external point of the same alignment, which would be C, zero. For it, what we have to do is to divide the bar in infinitesimal segments, such as this one. Although there would be a pile up to here and another pile up to there, and that is so small that it is practically punctual. For him, the vector R that we have to use to calculate the potential at P is the one that I have represented here, whose modulus is the one that interests me. Well, so using this expression, we see that we can take k and lambda as constants that are outside the integral. And now comes the first nuance. Who is the modulus of r for this particular exercise? That is to say, how long is this ray? You can see that this ray is what measures c. Minus this distance, which is neither more nor less than the x-coordinate of the green segment. So this is my integral. Between which points? I have to consider all the green segments whose x-coordinate is from this one here minus a. To this one here, b, so I have already defined the problem in mathematical form. Now what comes next is mathematics. I have to solve that integral. I am not going to enter here in the resolution of an integral of this type, although I have given you a comment. The complete development that I leave here so that you can see it calmly when you want is the one that you have here represented, but I am interested in making some nuances. One, you can see that I say that the integral of the inverse of the inverse of x minus c is logarithm Napierian of modulo absolute value of x minus c. There are many people who think that the integral of, for example, differential of x part by x is the Napierian logarithm of x. That is not true. It is Napierian logarithm of the absolute value of x. That's normally irrelevant because you usually work with positive x. But here just realize that for any point, the x coordinate is always going to be smaller than c. So this here is always going to be negative. If I had to take logarithm Napierian of minus 3, it does not exist. It is that the one to take is that of 3. That's why I emphasize the point that you have to take logarithm of absolute value. Concretely, as b and c, you can see that c is the big one and b is the small one. In fact, the absolute value is c minus b. And evidently, that of minus a minus c is plus c plus a. Well, speaking a little bit in terms, I am left with this final expression. It may seem that it depends on the coordinate system. However, realize that it does not. Specifically, notice that c plus a, what is it? Let's start here. C plus A is neither more nor less than the distance from P to the far end of the bar. In the same way that it is C minus B, C minus B is the distance from point P to the nearest end of the bar. So it just depends on the bar and point P. Actually, where we put the coordinate system doesn't matter. Obviously, if I put the y-axis somewhere else, I will have another C, another A and another B. But C plus A will be the same value and C minus B will be the same value. So it really only depends on the geometry of the problem, not on the coordinate system used. Second problem. 
let's calculate the electric potential created by a circular loop at a point P on its axis, located at a height H from the plane of the loop. You probably remember that in the theoretical explanations we solved an example like this, only that point P was exactly the origin, the center of the circle, now it is any point on the axis. As before, I will not talk about points outside the axis because they are much more complicated. Let's calculate that from here given at a distance h. The formula is again the formula of the densities, the linear distributions, and that's the vector r that we have to use, and this is the distance is the one that I care about, how much distance there is from the point charge, quote-unquote infinitesimal, to the point where I want to know the field. You can realize that this is the hypotenuse of a rectangle formed by this horizontal leg, which is neither more nor less than the radius of the circumference, and this other vertical leg, which is h. Therefore, replacing r by the corresponding expression of the Pythagorean theorem, I am left with this here. That, at first glance, can throw back thinking that less integral we have ahead, but then realize that it is a nonsense, because k is a constant, lambda is a constant, the radius of the circumference is constant, and the h is that of that fixed point that we want to calculate. So practically everything we can take out of the integral, and I am left with simply this here. The integral of the differential of L, which is neither more nor less than the length of the curve, that is 2 capital pi r, with which I end up getting this final result. As you can see, the integral has been, for an apparently complex case, quite simple. You can see that if the point were exactly this one here, the center of the loop, that is, lowercase h, were zero. The denominator would become dry uppercase r, and uppercase r with uppercase r would go away, and I would be left with 2 pi k for lambda, which, if you remember, is the formula that I came up with doing it directly in the theory part for what the potential was at this point. With this, we finish the application examples. Just remember the concepts handled which does not bring more detail because they are those that we had already mentioned in the corresponding theoretical exposition. Thank you very much for your attention.